Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beard Brigade. I'm John Solo. You are not. And today is brought to you by John Solo's aged white chocolate beanie look going on here. So I was telling Onley before we came on here and everybody in Discord knows I've got a zit the size of your mom's tit right on the side. It's like huge. Over So I'm wearing this beanie so nobody has to see this thing go off. All right. I'm sorry. I'm protecting the innocent here. That's what I'm doing. Hello. How are you? A um, couple notes before we get our guest on here. Um, first of all, um, if you'll notice, uh, I, I was... I was teasing Tracy, and I told Tracy that she was going to be in charge of doing the ticker. Now, my lovely TNA Trace, she does a lot of work, okay? Not only does she, she books this show, she takes care of all my social media shit. Um, she pre-reads a bunch of books for me. Between her and Jody, I work these girls into the ground. So I was kidding, Trace, you're not actually in charge of the ticker. But if you say another word about me fucking up the ticker, <laughs> this is on you. Um, so um, we got that. Uh, this week we are working on um, Got Me Hoping. Uh, this is by Casey Cox, the Australian dude that was on the really good look one. You remember that guy? He was on a couple months ago. Uh, we're doing this through Tantor and we're working in Discord all week long. We'll be on there approximately noon to five o'clock, somewhere in that range every day. So if you want to join us in Discord, you're more than welcome to. Coming up this weekend, we're going to be starting Little Victoria Sue's book, or other favorite Brit. I think this is a new series from Victoria Sue, and I cannot remember the name of the series for the life. It's like, is it Dawson's Creek? Is that the one we're starting this week? I forget. It's something like that. Um, and yeah, uh, past that, it's just a, a week as per normal. Um, next week, I can't remember who we got on next week on Talk to the Beard. I'm sure Tracy will tell me. It's in the ticker here, I bet. The one that Tracy was supposed to do but didn't this week. But anyways, it's a good week to be alive. Um, this Wednesday, we're going to be over in Tal Bowers' group. Here's what happened. Cheryl Kaiser, bless her heart. I think you're supposed to say it in the southern area. Bless your heart. Um, Cheryl Kaiser told me that I needed to go into Tal Bowers' group and do a thing, uh, do a live reading this week. She told me that I was supposed to do this two or three weeks ago. Because, And if you've ever seen Cheryl, you'd understand that she's from Chicago and she'll put the hit out on you if you don't do this right. So um, <clears throat> I'm, going, I'm going into Tal's group on Wednesday to do a, a live reading of a, a book that we did a couple few weeks back, and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, this Friday, we've got the uh, the Rambling Grambling show coming up again, um, and that stars Melissa Grambling, and, and Melissa rambles on forever and ever and ever. Oh, and it looks like we've got a, was it Davidson King? Was that who we got, Trace? Somebody told me there. Davidson King. That's right. That is coming up next week. Um, we've done a bunch of books for Davidson King through Tantor as well. So, Anyways, I think that's it. And of course, the morning coffee show coming up. Join me. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, without any more from me, even though you know I'm going to keep on rambling, because that's kind of what I do, I'm going to bring in our guest, Omni James. And here we go. Hello, Omni James. How the hell are you? I'm just peachy. How are you? Oh, well, I've got a huge zit on my head, and I have to wear a beanie, but other than that, I'm good. <laughs> I just had all my staples taken out of my leg, if that makes you feel any better. <laughs> <laughs> that, in fact, that in fact does. I have a huge scar. <laughs> is that why you're wearing pants? I was wondering. <laughs> Actually, I'm only wearing shorts, but I'm hoping nobody notices. I'm pretty much wearing my pajamas right now. I am being like the Ohio boy. So we've got a bunch of snow. I was telling you before we come in here, we got a bunch of snow this week, and it's fucking awesome, by the way. But I am wearing a... Let me see if I can get this on camera so you can, so you can see this. Um, this is a total Ohio thing here going on. I've Let got, me guess. You're wearing shorts. <laughs> I'm wearing, I'm wearing shorts, and uh, and long johns. That's what I'm wearing today. <laughs> shorts and long johns, because I'm a man. <laughs> I was gonna say, you know, they make this thing called pants, right? <laughs> yeah, that was my concession to being comfortable in the booth today. I was like, what am I gonna wear? Well, I got these long johns. Well, I can't just go out in long johns. I mean, I probably could. No one's gonna really fucking you see it. Like. 50 feet to the studio but then I well I'll put some shorts on over top but the great thing is I got to go down to the little carry out down the street after we're done with our our show today and I'm going to wear this and that's I mean I see people coming in there in pajama pants and shit I think I'm safe listen I I live in Florida like anything goes here like it don't matter where you are you see people wearing flip-flops and you know pajamas to church nobody cares not that I've been in church any times recently. So. <laughs> Burned down the... 
<laughs> Every time <laughs> I don't I think, think they like Florida, me there anymore. <laughs> what I think of Florida is like I, I think of Miami Vice. So I think of like Don. You, everybody's like Don Johnson and Tubbs, you know, and the, the feathered hair thing and the cocaine. Is is that? I thought that was all Florida. That's South Beach. <laughs> South Beach. That's a diet. That's just effect. South Beach. <laughs> I guess I'm. Though we I'm do never... have a place called the Square Grouper. That's all. That's you know what Square Groupers are. Uh, I know fish. Do they make square fish? Is that what that <laughs> square is? groupers are what we call the coke that falls out of planes. <laughs> they're like, <laughs> <laughs> they're called square groupers and they drop them and then you just go out in boats and you get the coke. And so we have a bunch of restaurants here called the square grouper. And that's what that is. <laughs> Dude, no, I, I, I learned that today. And are you telling me that there's a place you can go in America where you can hang out and they drop cocaine from the sky? <laughs> Is that Florida. <laughs> Jesus Florida. fucking Christ. I might I might put up with the heat for that. <laughs> you realize I'm, I I have I have done I've done more cocaine than any man ever seen in my life. I don't do it. I'm a recovering <laughs> drug addict. But man, I really loved the cocaine when I was younger. So uh, Listen, I used to work at a strip club when I was uh when I was 19. I was a bartender there. And half my paycheck went up my nose back in the day because it was just so easy to get back in the 90s, yeah. man. If Especially in the strip clubs, it just flowed like water. <laughs> like... Uh, that's, uh, that, oh, that, that is how you catch a stripper, by the way. How you catch a cat, first off, you just put a box in the middle of the room. To catch a stripper, you just cut a line out and they just come flowing right after. It's amazing. And that's it? fantastic. We, uh, <clears throat> I, I ran sound. The last time I was in a strip club, I was actually working and I was not stripping. I was, uh, they hired this this hair metal band to play like live music outside of the strip club and uh it was like on a right. wednesday or something it was odd it wasn't like on a normal on you know, a wednesday we're going to have this rock band play outside so yeah me and my my lovely wife she was my uh, my lighting queen at the time so i would set up the pa system and run for the band and my my wife would run the lights and they set this this whole thing up and there are these strippers just like you know <laughs> There's nothing more pathetic than like three strippers when they're not stripping. I mean, it's fucking horrible. No. Was, yeah, <laughs> they were like coming out and hanging. Well, half with the, the time they're hungover. <laughs> Precise. They, they like you. Yeah. Really, I think the most pathetic thing was because we started in like the afternoon. It was like five o'clock in the sun. What you don't want to see is like a stripper in full light. That's what you don't want to see. No. They're just not the no. most attractive. Especially in, in Florida, <laughs> we got like three strip clubs where you're getting top notch, but the rest of them. No, no, it's no. Not, it's, a, it's a bad deal. <laughs> oh God! One time, one time I went with a bunch of friends to a strip club, and uh, it was a strip club I used to work at actually. And they had changed names, and it was like new ownership or whatever. And I hadn't been there in forever. But we go in, and the guy's like, "Oh, we're getting in for free. My girlfriend works there." You know, I was like, "Oh, cool, whatever." So we're all sitting around, and this girl walks up, and I'm drunk, very, very drunk. And I say to my friend whoa can you say crack whore and he goes guys this is my girlfriend i was like oh fuck okay whoops hi nice to meet you like, oh my god uh, so let's yeah. talk about the uh the young adult literature that you write then yeah right <laughs> there's a reason i got out of that <laughs> it did crack me up though because you know all all of us come to this genre for for a different reason all that fun stuff but i told you earlier i was looking through here and i um and I, I i decided this is my show prep i pull up your website 30 seconds before we meet that's my show prep that's how hard i work at this thing Might as well. um yeah so uh you live in central florida with your children your pit bull your wiener dog and an ever-growing collection of shady looking cats you split your time between writing y a l g b t paranormal romances and pinning adult mm romances so you told me in the conversation beforehand that you kind of just put the YA on the side now and you're not really doing that much anymore. Yeah, I I haven't finished the series. Um, it was a really like huge world building. Like um, each book was about 540 pages. It was very large, but unfortunately the YA genre right now is like, they want short book a month, like spit them out. And it's just not how I was writing. So pretty much it just kind of got away from me because I'm taking a year to write a book and they're like, no, we want 12 books in a year. I'm like, good mm -hmm. luck. Like I, that's just not me. Plus I was working full time as a registered nurse. So I didn't have <laughs> that kind of time no. to just keep spitting out those books. So, um, but yeah, then, uh, I think it was Kyleen, uh, Newhold who was actually one of my YA readers and I was reading her books 
and she kind of was like well why don't you try writing male male romance and i was like well and then lynn van dorn was like yeah you totally should and so they kind of alpha read as i wrote my very first book they would like read each chapter and they would each critique my chapter <laughs> not intimidating at all um <laughs> But. Well, that's that is a power group of of writers right there. That you just name that's a lot of like big time fucking <laughs> yeah, writers. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I have some very powerful friends. <laughs> <laughs> now you're talking like Cheryl Kaiser, um, right? The, uh, well, and I felt bad too. I, and unfortunately, I just honestly I just didn't get time to do my my show prep here. I knew you were coming on, and like in the back of my mind, I was like, I know another guest, another friend that I've talked to on this show has has recommended that Onley come on, and I knew, and I just could not fucking remember. It was kind of embarrassing. But yeah. To be honest, I'm an <laughs> asshole, Neve. so that's the way it works. Yeah. So yeah, Neve Wilder. Um, are are you two still working together? I I know that she had spoken highly of you yes. when she was on the show. <laughs> we have a great time writing together. Um. I am one of those people who's not very good at um, sharing. Like, so everybody's like, you should co-author a book. You know, it's like easier. You'll have like a lot of creativity and stuff. And I'm like, eh, I don't really want that. <laughs> I'm kind of a control freak. I just like to do my thing. And then Neve was the same way or Nev. I don't even know how she pronounces it. And that's sad. Um, <laughs> she didn't know how I pronounce my name either. That's how close we are. Um, <laughs> We talk on the phone constantly and neither of us know how to pronounce it. No, I believe you. Names. Truly, I uh, believe you. Yeah, that's... <laughs> but yeah, so sh I said to her, I was like, look, you write like I write. Like you write a lot of sarcasm like I do, a lot of dark humor. I was like, why don't we think about writing together? And she was like, no. <laughs> I was like, okay, never mind. But if you change your mind. <laughs> and then one day she came to me and she's like, hey, <laughs> remember how you asked about co-writing? And we kind of made this deal like if it's we wouldn't publish it but we'd just do it for fun like we would just back and forth and so we made a pinterest board and it was just like we totally definitely had the right aesthetic for like what we were looking for we wanted assassins we wanted like dark and you know but funny and we just clicked so we did three books for that series we were going to do a fourth one but then kind of life ran us both over um so now we're kind of playing around with the idea of maybe doing like vampires or more like new adult stuff like she does, like trying to do something in that vein. But we're very, very, very much in the like very early stages of planning. So because I still have my my series to finish, she's got her series to finish. Well, Plus it I'll ends up happening. <laughs> it, it, it happens like that. Um uh, most authors that I talk to are, are, are typically have a lot of plot bunnies going on. And you're right. You can't write. Yes. From what I've seen, you can't write 14, 16 books a year. This is not going to fucking happen. So you have to pick your battles, right? No. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it are, sucks because it's like, it's like, yes, I want to do that. Yes, I want to do that. Yes, but I can't. Are you still working as an RN now or are you a full-time writer? What are you, how are you working? No, I stopped. I retired in 2020 march of 2020 like literally right before covid came and kicked mm. everybody's ass i was like peace i'm out like <laughs> i finally got to a point where i was making as much money as a writer as i was as an rn so i was like okay now i feel like i can step away and mm -hmm. and like not feel like i'm you know betraying my entire family's income <laughs> <laughs> because i have yeah. all these children that somehow i still support um <laughs> Well, you can, for, for one, you're in Florida, you can sell them. It's not such a bad deal. Um, and if... <laughs> they're really pretty. They're very pretty. And they're, they're in their early twenties. I'm telling you, I could get a good price for them. <laughs> you, wait, I'm and I'm, 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 I'm not trying to be like super nice or anything, but early twenties, you are, you gotta be like 35 somewhere. I'm 45. Mean, that's, okay. 45. Yeah, so, okay. Just you're turn. my age then. That makes sense. So you started early yeah. like me. My son's 25. I started pretty yes. early on. Yeah. yeah. She was 21 um, when I had yeah. her. The other one I'm talking about is her wife. <laughs> so <laughs> that's complicated. Who I practically I like raised it. also. It's very complicated. Um, <laughs> we, we, we had one of those. Um, my follow this. <laughs> Follow this. My 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 sister is married to my brother. Um, make sense of that one for a second. That's, that makes so much. That makes me feel so much better. <laughs> maybe I should live in Florida. <laughs> you you probably should. You'd be welcome because I I live with my daughter, her wife, and their boyfriend. So, <laughs> and their baby. <laughs> it's, it's perfect. <laughs> Yes. Well, you, Come on you down. Fit, yeah, you, I, I think I would fit in there and you would fit in, in here. Were you born in Florida? Have you lived there your whole life? Or were... I was. I think I was the only person here born in Florida. But yeah, I was born. 
in Sunrise, Florida, which is kind of close to Miami, but now I live like right smack in the middle of Florida, but on the coast so that it's not the rednecky, scary, racist part of Florida. Yep, that's which is what of... we call Central Florida. Is that what that... <laughs> <laughs> now, did, did you have a did, Central Florida? Did, did you a large family, or were you the only child? How, how did that work? I am the baby of six, awesome. so. Um, well, you'll love this because my family is also very fucked up. Uh, mm -hmm. I have four siblings that are much, much older than me. My next oldest sibling, who's my full-blooded sister, is 11 years older than me. So I was kind of like an accident. Um, but my dad was married before my mom, who was 14 years younger than him. So his oldest daughter was only eight years younger than my mom. <laughs> So, <laughs> so that made student conferences really fun when I was in kindergarten because people would be like, wait, your sister's how old? But that's your mom. I'm like, uh-huh. They're like, that doesn't make sense mathematically. <laughs> it's like, and I'm in kindergarten. I'm like, I don't know. Like, what? Well, it, it makes for, uh, you're, 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 uh, you're fun to talk to and you're very well adjusted, obviously. So it, it makes, it makes, I'm, very, I'm the youngest. My therapist of, says so. <laughs> well, I, I'm the youngest of four. I get this. I, I, I get the, the yeah. interaction that happens with siblings and it's a lot of fun to figure out where people come from in that regards. Now, when, when you were growing yeah. up and you were younger, were all the siblings all there? I mean, some of them were quite a bit older. No, I kind it was kind of weird because my sister, by the time I was like, I didn't even know I had four older siblings until I was four. They just appeared one day on our doorstep and I was like, oh, okay. Like I said, I was four. I didn't really get that that was weird. Um, but my sister was 16 when she moved out to go live with my grandmother. And also my other older sister, my half sister that is not related to my grandmother also went to go live with my grandmother in Boston. Um, <laughs> Cause that's just how our family is. And my grandmother was crazy. You want to talk about mentally well-adjusted? That's not my grandmother. She was schizophrenic, and she used to tell us all the time that their paintings were looking at her. So she is definitely the one you wanted watching us. Um, <laughs> oh, that is but fantastic. But yeah, so I kind of was raised almost like an only child. You know, like I, even though I had five older siblings, none of them really lived with me. So I had a 50-year-old dad and, you know, a mom who was in her mid-30s who was a workaholic. So like most Gen X kids, I pretty much raised myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, so, yeah, like, so I got, I, I definitely was treated like a, like an only child. I was the spoiled one for sure. The only child thing is I've, I've experienced that myself. I'm, I, I'm not an only child, but I'm the youngest of four. And uh, right. what, what I figured out was that, uh, by the time my parents got to me, they were just like, yeah, fuck it. Do what you want. That was kind of the way I, that's how it. my dad was. Yeah. He was just like, whatever, juggle knives. I don't... They used to let the dog babysit me. We had a German <laughs> shepherd that was police trained. They would leave me with the German shepherd when I was like three or four years old. They'd be like, oh, sh no, she'll be fine. I'm like, okay, great. I have like nine near death experiences before I could get into the double digits. Well, you find that at least I I found that I appreciated that. I, I didn't at the time. And you know, when I was 18, 19, I yeah. was a little angsty about that sort of shit. But now I, I really appreciate my upbringing. A, a lot of kids don't get to experience yeah. the things that, that I did. Like, if I <laughs> probably because they shouldn't have, but we did. Probably, yeah, yeah. I mean, it just if you think about some of the shit that you could do, like there's no there's no way possible for one time wise. Like the world we live in now. Yeah. I mean, you know, I could just go. Oh, I'm like eight years old. I could just go wandering off in the woods by yeah. myself all fucking day long. Um, no cell yep. phones, no nothing like that. You know, just yeah, just go. be home or just be home by dark. My mom had an old ship bell she used to ring on the back porch when she wanted us home. We had one of those. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Like, just don't miss that bell or you're in big trouble. But other than that, we could be out there selling Coke. She didn't get her. She didn't give a shit. Like, she didn't well, care. She, we used to go walk a, like three blocks away in the middle of Hollywood, which is like, which is like Miami, only dangerous and grosser somehow. Um, but we would just go walk. And this lady used to sell lollipops that she made in her kitchen for a quarter and we would just go buy them from her and, and we would have to walk past the nudist 
people and we used to go and peek through their their gate because they were always doing nude yoga and it was this is the 80s of course and we were just like and we were we were like doing the shadiest stuff like i'm such a helicopter mom even now she's 24 i'm like where are you going when are you coming back do you have your cell phone like can i check your location but like my parents were just like don't die bye I guess they figured they had five others, like whatever. Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it was very blase. They were just like, whatever. Oh my god. They didn't care if I drank. They, yeah, they didn't yeah. care. You know, my my come to think of it, uh, now my my dad was a preacher, so my my dad uh, uh he oh. wouldn't have <laughs> So I, I got the dude that's a whole other thing to unpack. I mean, I got laid more yeah, on a church bus say, than I ever like a whole did. Other from, story. Yeah. Um, but that that being said, looking back at it all now, like I wouldn't trade that for the fucking world. There are certain things that yeah. uh, that you get from that. You get a self confidence yeah. that uh, you can go walking that's, down the street. You're not and a fucking very scared. dark sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, <laughs> so so in, in in that environment and everything else coming up, did did you end up going to college? Obviously, you're an RN, but did you go right away? Did you take a little time off? What did you oh, do? Oh no. Oh God. Uh, I graduated at 16 because I was in this like dropout prevention program and they basically just sat me in front of a computer and they were like, do all your work and then you'll graduate. So I just knocked out literally four years of school as fast as humanly possible. And then they were like, no, you're too young to graduate. And I was like, this was your fucking idea. Like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so then they were like, you should dual enroll. And I was like, ew, no, I don't want more school. Like I just want out of school. Um, so uh, then I started working at the, when I turned 18, I started working for my mother. Actually before then, I used to work for my mom um, when I was 14, just for school clothes. She would make me work the summers, um, selling palm trees, cold calling nurseries to be like, hi, do you want to buy some palm trees? You know, and they'd be like, what the fuck? Who is this kid? Like, and yeah, so she would make me do that because she was the vice president of the company. She would make me cold call people and ask them if they wanted to buy palm trees. Very expensive palm trees, by the way. Back then, you would pay probably three to five thousand dollars per tree. Per tree. <laughs> they were Jesus very expensive. Christ. They're all over Miami. You go down to Miami, you'll see all of the trees we installed. There's tons of them. But like all these famous people used to come to our job to pick out their own trees which is fucking weird. I have like, of all the things I think like, oh, when I'm rich, I want to go buy my own palm trees. No, no. But they would come uh, Madonna, Vanilla Ice, um, Celine Dion, like all of these, uh, Gloria Estefan, all these people would show up and they would like tag their own trees. And we had all these, these guys who were um, like sports guys, you know, like baseball players and basketball players and and I have no idea anything like and of course I'm like 16 you know I don't give a shit and these people would come in and they'd be like <laughs> they all look so sh scruffy and I was like yeah the the driver entrance is around the back and this one guy <laughs> you know who I am <laughs> which is my favorite thing to have people tell me when I'm 16 <laughs> like no I have no idea who you are and he's like <laughs> I probably even shouldn't even say his name but he's probably dead now um <laughs> <laughs> he's like my name is Dante Bichette and I was like all right and he's like of the Colorado Rockies and I was like who the fuck are the Colorado Rockies what <laughs> he's like seriously and then my boss just comes flying out of his office he's like hey Dante what's up man and he's like glaring at me and I'm like what what the fuck I don't know who this guy is and like, but we used to hear that all the time these people got these like ridiculous Rich, like just rich people would just want like all this stuff for free and i'm just like you have so much money why <laughs> but that, you know what i when i worked for cleveland clinic you know like i said i worked at the florida oh. one um we dealt with like very exclusive clientele because we were right next to palm beach island and they would come in and they would be driving like bentley's and all these super luxury cars and they'd be like do you realize that it is 13 dollars to valet park I was like, do you realize there's a garage right there? <sighs> and they're like, well, does anybody else complain that it's $13 to valet park? I was like, you know, that's weird because the nicer their cars, the more they complain. And then I just wait and I watch oh them realize that I'm talking shit about them to their faces. And then they just get real quiet. Oh my God. They weren't sad to see me go at Cleveland Clinic. <laughs> no, for a second. After 11 <clears throat> years, I was a little bit of a bitch. <laughs> 
So it appears we are uh, we are recording. Um, so I'm I'm not going to stop the interview, but it appears that we dropped our live stream there, which is unfortunate. Ooh. It's the first that's happened in a while, oh, but we're sucks. still recording. So that what we're doing right yeah, now, yeah, no, that's no problem. On YouTube and shit. Hang on one second. Let me see if I can solve this here. Um, sure. Da -da -da. I'm going to write anything. a comment to the crowd. Hey guys, look <laughs> like our stream dropped. <clears throat> I'm going to try and repost. Da, da, da. CFCC. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Down. Exactly. Oh, it looks like we just went back up. Ta-da! Look at that shit. See? Ha! It worked. They, they, I'm on to them. <laughs> exactly. The, the problem was you were talking about that fucking dude from the uh, the, the Rockies. Is what yeah, no, he's got about. connections. <laughs> <laughs> he's not dead. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it, you know what? It could very well be. We've got, I told you, we've got like a snowstorm here happening today. So it could well be that. Oh, that's um, true. But <clears throat> I've got to get, I've got so many questions here. So one, okay. when, when you realized the money that was involved in selling palm trees, and your mother owns yes. the company at that point, <laughs> you didn't decide to just stay in the palm tree business because it sounds like there's a hell of a lot of fucking money in it. It's kind of crazy. So my mom was the vice president of the company. The owner was um, a guy named George. And he, like many people who work there, were coked out of their head 90% of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and I got, I could start a podcast just on the stories from working at that place. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, my mom was the money. So my mom like was constantly being like, no, you can't buy that. We have to have money for payroll. No, you can't buy that. No, you can't go to the casino. Put that back. Stop touching it. Don't do that. You know, she was, she was the mom of the, mm -hmm. of the company. And so then um, the owner met this girl named Melissa, who was from Australia. She decided that she wanted to be in charge. <laughs> so um, one day, George just came to my mom after she did a million dollars in sales that month and basically said, I'm demoting you <laughs> to salesperson. I'm taking away your BMW. I'm taking away your bonuses. And um, Melissa's going to be in charge now. So. How's that for you? And she was just kind of like, well, you just made me affordable to everybody else who's been trying to poach me for the last 20 years. Eat shit. Wow. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> yeah. So that's actually why I wasn't still working there. Um, I worked there pretty much off and on from the time I was 16 till I had my daughter when I was 21. Um, and then actually George and I got into a huge fight right before my mom left. And... <laughs> He like threw all my work in the garbage and he was like yelling at me, which is very typical. And I was just like, I'm out. Like, this is stupid. Like, why am I still here? I don't actually need to be here. So I just finally quit one day. But man, that place was a roller coaster. It was wild. Like we had a, a secretary who just one day quit and didn't tell anybody. And we were looking for her everywhere. And then we found this teeny tiny post-it on George's computer that just said, fuck you, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Which I personally thought was the best way to quit ever. Um, one time a girl took one of the company cars and didn't come back for a week and then just walked in, hung up the keys and started working like it was no big deal. Oh, my God. <laughs> Welcome to Florida. I was telling you, this place was wild. And that was back in the day when everybody was on Fen Fen or Coke or both. So it was just like, oh, yeah. we were the most jumpy group of people to ever work in one building i'm surprised there wasn't some sort of massacre at some point we were all uh, so fucked up all the time well i had a sales manager once i used to work these silly uh telemarketing sales jobs that's how i as i was uh -huh. a kid i was like a musician and then i always had to have these stupid day jobs so i had a sales manager once come out to this this is in the 90s late 90s and and uh they had busted a smoking pot and we were smoking pot outside and uh, <clears throat> he was like look I don't care if you smoke pot one little bit, okay? Just as long as you get your work done. If I thought that right. bringing you in cocaine would get you to sell more, that's what I would do. <laughs> Just sell. <laughs> We're like, fuck yeah, dude. And yeah, this is fair, great. Right? Best job ever. <laughs> exactly. We were a pretty good sales force as far as that goes. Um, so uh, you leave there and now you're, you're, and by the way, oh, I wanted to ask too, homes, so you're about my age. Homeschooling was not accepted back then, which it kind of sounds like what, what you were kind of doing, yeah. the, the, doing your work from well, home. Well, no, I was, I wasn't doing it from home. I was doing it in school, but like at this, like this little center that was just all computers. Like, because mm -hmm. a lot of people didn't even have home computers back then because, you know, it was the 90s. Yeah. Um, 
93 actually so yeah so i would just sit in this room with a bunch of other burnouts and we would just like do our schoolwork. and the thing is though is that i'm really good at f realizing like ways to cheat i like to call it critical thinking but um <laughs> they they would like basically let you take a test and then they would tell you all the things you got wrong and then you could take the test immediately over again and it was the exact same questions in the exact same order and it could be 150 questions and I would still remember every single right answer. So like I went from having an F in every class to every test to having an A and nobody cared. Nobody even looked. So they were like, wow, you graduated with a 4.0. And I'm like, yeah, duh. <laughs> the fact that nobody else is should tell you something. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> well, but we I, had to so take all these dumb classes. Did, like did you, physics. Did you, do a, did you do a GED or did you actually get your, your diploma at that point? Nope. I had my actual diploma. That was fucking awesome. See, yeah. it made me take a GED. Yes. I, I left when I was 16 and I did the test out thing, but then they were like, no, you can't have mm -hmm. a diploma for this because I homeschooled the very last year of it. So I had to go get a GED. Ugh. So still to this day, I've got the GED, <laughs> um, which turns out in life, it really didn't fucking matter, but it doesn't it give it a shit. Like, it doesn't matter. That's, that's what yeah. I tell my daughter all the time. I'm like, you can go to college if you want to, but really you're just putting yourself in debt. Like who cares? <laughs> and, and and maybe not for, okay, so for instance, you went to be an RN and for that, you, yes. you definitely kind of, they won't just let you go in and no. start poking people with needles. You got to actually Well, I will tell you that I didn't learn shit in nursing school. I learned it all on the job after nursing school because they Makes don't sense. let you do nothing in nursing school. <laughs> so what, what made like, you decide here, you wanted to, do do, what, what made you decide you wanted to be a nurse? Was it the money? Did you have a love to, to take care of old people? How did that well, work? God, no. Um, if somebody had asked me at 19 if I was going to be a nurse, I would have probably thrown up on my shoes. Like, God, no, no. It's gross. Never. I'm a Virgo. I don't like messes. Um, but then my mom got cancer. Um, she got a really bad bone cancer. And she was kind of supporting the whole family. And I had a daughter. And I was like, I was still, I was working job to job and I was working a lot of sales jobs and I made good money, but in Florida, everything's seasonal. So it was feast or famine. We were either rolling in money or we were broke. And my mom's meds cost like five to $6,000 a month with her insurance. So I was like, I need a career that pays a lot of money and I need it fast. And so I just went to this, like, uh, you know, the career colleges and I was like, what's the most money I can make in the least amount of time. And they're like, well, you could be a registered nurse. And I was like, sold. How do I get in there? Like, and that's what I did. And I just determined I was going to be the best fucking registered nurse they had. And I graduated with like a 3.9. And then I rolled straight into a job where I was, believe it or not, I went into um, clinical research trials. So it was a, it was a weird, it was a weird right turn, but like, it got me the money I needed and it still let me go home at five every day to take care of my kid. But that, that's a and then I did thing. all kinds of stuff when I, yeah, when I got to Cleveland clinic, uh, well, first I was a psych nurse, which is if anybody reads my books, they'll see in the back that I'm a psych nurse and uh, for a children's residential treatment facility. So for a couple of years, I just took care of mentally ill babies from five to 17, which is why I write because I need the therapy. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a rough gig it was a rough gig um it made me want to kill a lot of parents um but then i <laughs> then i started at cleveland clinic and then i just wanted to kill a bunch of people um so i i did everything at cleveland clinic i was an endocrinology nurse and then i was an oncology nurse and then i did cardiology then i moved over to radiology they put me everywhere which is why they really were sad when i left because i was the only person who knew how to work every single department in that place mm -hmm. but I Does that have anything to do to with that that psychopath series thing? A lot of people are asking about that in the, in the crowd. Does that have anything to do with why you wrote that series? It it one hundred percent does. Yes. Well, okay. I'm gonna be honest here. Um, I wrote my second book in my elite series, and the character was a sociopath. And I didn't want to do it at first. And then everybody was like, no, do it, do it. And then I wrote this completely batshit crazy ending. And Kylene was like, oh my God, don't do it. Don't write that. And I was like, oh, but I really want to write it that way. And she was like, no, don't do it. It's going to kill your career before it even starts. And then I let her read it. And she was like, never mind, forget everything I said, totally write it. So I did that. And then every book I read after, or I wrote after that, people were like, hey, are you going to write more killers? Are you going to write more psychopaths? Are you going to write more crazy people? And I was like, shit, okay, this is my wheelhouse. I can write that. Like, absolutely. <laughs> so I was like, you want psychopaths? How about seven of them? So that's what I'm writing right now. A series about seven psychopathic brothers. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
so I'm like, if that's what you want, I can I can do that. Well, in the, to be honest with you, I mean, I've I've narrated a lot of fucking books. I've I've only narrated maybe two or three that I can think of where the MC was a psychopath. So that's certainly something that there's well, a market for that's not out there very much. I mean, do it. Well, also, like I I make it very clear in my books, please don't date psychopaths or sociopaths because none of them are how I write them. Um, like I, but it's funny because people are like, oh, I didn't realize psychopaths could be could be so so nice and unmisogynistic, and I'm like, no, no, no. Let's, this is fiction. <laughs> this is in the fiction, not nonfiction section. They're all crazy. Um, but that's fantastic. I, I just. I always joke that I write dark romance for people who are afraid of dark romance because there's just like certain lines I won't cross. And people who write dark romance are like, oh, yeah, he's a he's a killer and he's a rapist and he's like an axe murderer. And I'm like, mm, I'm OK with killer as long as he's doing it for a good reason. And I'm OK with him being a dick to everybody but the person he's falling in love with. And I'm like, I have all these caveats because I just can't bring myself to just go there i'm like you can't be a dick to the person you're falling in love with that's not romance to me so like i just have these weird hitches in my and like so i can't say i write dark romance i write like morally gray romance so. i ran into the the in mf romance i've done a few of those now and uh, i run into that a lot where the it's the alpha male um and he's just kind of an i absolute can't stand prick. that phrase <laughs> yeah, yes know, they call them alpha like... holes it's a whole genre like <laughs> I just can't stand it. I can't stand it. This is probably going to get me banished from like, but like, I really stopped reading male female romance for that reason. Once, once, <clears throat> you know, the Fifty Shades of Grey came out, um, I just I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't read it. I was in the lifestyle for years, and like, as somebody who understands BDSM, what reading that book, it was just like, oh my god, this is all wrong. This is all wrong. Like, people are going to get the wrong idea, and. So after that, I just literally stopped reading male, female and went straight to male, male. I just couldn't deal with the misogyny anymore. And the just just the alpha hole, the whole just, oh, mm -hmm. he's a dick to you because he likes you. I'm like, oh, that is just the wrong narrative. Like, that is not what I want people to be thinking. Like, and the thing about male, male is like you're starting off on equal footing because no matter who's the more dominant or who's the more submissive or if, if there even is that. Like they're both men. So in the eyes of the world, they're still equal, no matter who's doing what, you know, like, which uh -huh. you don't get in, unfortunately, in male female romance. You just don't, you know? Well, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things going on there. For one, it reminds me, I'm not a, I, I'm not saying I, I'm not a big porn guy. Um, I, I, I watched a, a ton <laughs> of porn in my early years and I really, but it, at this point, some of it just kind of disgusts me and maybe it's the way that it's filmed. But for instance, like, I don't want to see a guy spit on it, like and spit on a woman. Oh God. Just I not really hate that. Just like, what the fuck is going on there? Like, <laughs> I don't get it. Um, so gross. yeah. And it's just the, the, the degrading, the degradation. I don't, I'm not an author. I'm not good yes. with words, but it's that, that I just don't see. Um, yeah, well, the, the, go ahead, please. No, well, I, I, God, I, I nobody's going to even believe me at this point, but I used to work for a porn company um, oh. after I, after I, before I became a nurse. And when I was actually in nursing school, I worked for a company called iFriends, which is at the time was like the biggest um, server for chat hosts when it was just sort of starting out when people could like watch people and talk to each other. And so my job in the fraud department was I was basically, I had to, I had to read all of the chat between the chat host and the guy. And my job was to like get personal identifiers, like their name, how old they are, whether they're married, whether they have kids, because inevitably they spend nine hours on the phone with these girls or on the camera. And then they call and they say, somebody stole my credit card. And my job was to be like, well, Michael, um, are you sure somebody stole your credit card? You don't have a wife named Susan and four kids named Sam. Da, 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 da. And then they'd be like, oh, never mind, click. Like, so after a while, and I also, part of my job was to make sure there's five things you can't do in porn in the United States. And it's, you know, you can't talk about kids, you can't talk about animals, you can't talk about <clears throat> bodily fluids, and you can't talk about incest. Um, so if somebody mentioned that in chat, then I had to go check the reel to make sure that they weren't actually doing something illegal. Um, we used to call them these, sheriff's wait, reports, which are these, so are these laws? Is that what those are? are laws or this I don't is just think like they're a no -no? I don't think there's, 
I don't think they're laws anymore, but at the time it was, um, because this was so new, um, it was, you couldn't do it or we would get fined like by somebody, I don't know, but it was, it was a big deal enough to where they were constantly monitoring us and making sure that we weren't missing things. Um, but yeah, but he would have to go check the chat or you'd have to check the film. And it was just like, I don't know. You would hear these guys and they'd be like, oh, well, I'm a preacher. I'm a priest. I'm I'm a school teacher. I'm like, and all of a sudden you're just like, oh my God. Like, and they would have like, and most of it's just like, hey, I'm lonely. My mom, my wife doesn't listen to me, which I get like, whatever. But like some of the stuff they said was so gross. I was like, you know what? Maybe I'm not bisexual. Maybe I just like women because this is gross. <laughs> like, maybe I just like women. Maybe Honestly, I can just dude, flip I, that switch and just be I, like women. I never understood that. in a million years. I mean, if I, I I'm a lesbian at heart. It's I, I don't understand why anybody's <laughs> into guys. We're fucking gross, man. We really hairy in all the wrong places. We smell like there's crinkles in our skin that have weird odor. Yeah. I mean, just no, it, it's disgusting. Yeah. But and women smell good and they're pretty. Yeah, they all smell, apparently, and I've read enough of these stories at this point, I think that most women smell like cinnamon, right? Is that true? I mean, I've... Right, of course. That's that's exactly what we smell like all the time. Sometimes lavender, I, but mostly that's, cinnamon. That's what I thought. Depends and on the if, season. If you get a hippie chick, sometimes patchouli. I get it. I mean, Patchouli. Actually, I love patchouli, and my whole house smells like patchouli. My friends say it's because I'm a witch, but like, like, no, I love patchouli. I love it because it smells like, I don't know, a new age bookstore to me. My favorite place in the world. <laughs> we, I, I watched a guy get fired from a uh, sales job once. So I was telling marketing jobs, and at this one, they they knew that we went and smoked pot, right? But they, it was like it was like a joking thing. We wouldn't actually acknowledge it. So, sales floor manager, we hear we all come back from lunch, and uh, we hear the sales floor manager yell out, "Y'all been smoking pot out there again?" And we're like, "No, no, no, no! I can smell your patchouli from here." <laughs> And I just, every time I hear patchouli now, I hear my sales manager, you know, I can smell your patchouli from here. Like our <laughs> oh, incense God. sticks in our car was covering that shit. Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, a couple things here. First off, yes. dude, you have to come back on this fucking show, please. Please, for Absolutely. the love of God, Anytime come back on. I don't even think we've <laughs> barely great. scratched the surface. I think we finally got up to your college days. Um, yeah, uh, secondly, I know, God. I, I have missed so many comments here. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep track, but for, you can understand. She's if there's fucking anything, hilarious. Yeah, if, <laughs> if there's anything you want to ask me, go ahead. I swear. Yeah, they, they, I, I'm scrolling back through here to see what I can get. And eventually my scrolling, uh, people are talking about your psychopath thing. That ending that you were talking about, they fucking loved the ending. Several people had said that. Um, the morally dark romances, um, people are talking about that. And my scrolling stops there. There's a lot of questions. What I'm going to ask you to do is, if you could, please jump in when we're done here. We're going to wrap up here in a couple minutes and, and uh, go through and see if you can answer a couple of them. Um, sure. And yeah, Trace, please, for the love of God, get her back on because um, <laughs> this is fantastic. Um, <laughs> I, I have to try and at least be respectful here. What are you working on currently? What do you got coming out? Um, the fourth book in my psychopath series, Necessary Evils, is coming out um, the end of this month, the 31st. So I'm wrapping that up, getting all of the, you know, things done that need to be done before that comes out. Um, it's going out to ARC readers on Wednesday. Um, then I'm jumping straight into book five. Uh, I'm hoping to have the series wrapped up uh, by July. And then there's a spinoff series coming um, that will be kind of based off of the premise of this series but it'll be kind of like a whole different way of kind of looking at it it'll be more like a dark academia kind of thing like deadly class um i don't know if you liked that show but it was bomb it was I'm, a great I'm fucking show no idea what you're talking about but that's okay all right. I'm, I'm, I'm old and i don't great, watch tv ever so <laughs> well it's on sci-fi and it's actually um it started out as a um graphic novel um it actually might even be a manga um but it's basically a school of killers like it's just a school full of like teenage murderers <laughs> and like that are learning how to be assassins so something along that but like adults that's fantastic actually it sounds really cool because i don't write kids um, <laughs> not anymore <laughs> not anymore can't do that that's in the nope. rules of porn um <laughs> yeah it, it, that's that's awesome uh, thank you so much this is the easiest part of the show all we got to do is wave bye to the camera and everybody thank you so much for hanging bye. out we will all see you soon 